Should Jews abroad voice public criticism of Israel, especially vociferous criticism? Is such debate healthy? Or can it be dangerous? Could it actually help those who would undermine Israel? Right or wrong? Right to or no right to are the questions. But it's all about the left, actually, as major arguments erupt within Jewish communities in both Britain and the United States over whether left-wing Jews are right, whether they have the right to criticize, often ferociously condemn, Israeli policies. The furore on both sides of the Atlantic revolves around the insistence of leftist Jewish writers and academics on a basic freedom of expression as they brand Israeli policies towards the Palestinians and also in last year's war in Lebanon as immoral, policies which they assert deserve to be castigated and worse. In turn, they are challenged by a spread of Jewish public institutions and community leaders who assert that such criticism simply abets radical Muslims and other extremist groups and fuels anti-Semitism. From their point of view, moreover, the issue is nothing less than whether Israel's existence Israel's right to exist is being challenged, and what's more, being challenged from within by Jews. This week, the debate spewed angrily when a group calling itself Independent Jewish Voices was launched in Britain. The group, including more than a 100 writers, academics, doctors, lawyers and actors, objects to the view that British Jews speak with one voice and that this voice supports the Israeli government's policies. Let's hear Brian Klug, an Oxford University philosopher who as spokesman for the self-styled independent Jewish voices, took the row to a whole new pitch. He begins his assault, interestingly enough. If there is one thing on which Jews can agree, it is this. It's good to argue, he says. Jewish culture has thrived on argument, frank, sincere disagreement, ever since Moses disputed with God. But today, an oppressive and an unhealthy atmosphere is leading many Jews to feel uncertain about speaking out on Israel and on Zionism. Klug goes on. As the situation in the Middle East deteriorates yearly, more and more Jews watch with dismay from afar. Dismay turns to anguish when innocent civilians, Palestinians and Israelis, suffer injury and death. Anguish turns to outrage when the human rights of a population under occupation are repeatedly violated in the name of the Jewish people. Klug quotes Prime Minister Ehud Olmert to saying, during Israel's war with Hezbollah last summer, I believe that this is a war that is fought by all Jews. That, says Klug angrily, is part of the doctrine that Israel represents Jewry as a whole, a dangerous fallacy, he calls it. No one has the right to speak for all Jews, he maintains. Instead, trying to stake out the high moral ground from within a Jewish point of view, he says, when we speak out against Israel's occupation of the West Bank and Gaza or the bombing of Lebanon or discrimination against Palestinians within Israel itself, we are not turning against our Jewish identity, we are turning to it. But all too often, a basic weakness in the group's strong theoretical argument to hold dissenting views is exposed when it comes to their hardcore attitudes of some of the critics. What is especially I add many of their counter-critics is that their criticism of those who would silence them is that it follows hard on a controversial declaration by Tony Lerman, the head of a prominent think tank, the Institute of Jewish Policy Research. Lerman also publicly questioned the viability of Israel as a Jewish state and suggested that it be replaced by a binational Jewish Arab state, a new state which he said could offer a home for Palestinian refugees. This week, in a new article, Lerman decries the for or against us mentality which leaders of the community, he complains, are fostering. And he goes on, pro-Israel and Zionist groups interpret intensified criticism of Israel and anti-Zionism as the expression of a new anti-Semitism. This is often, he declares, used in an attempt to stifle strong criticism of Israeli policies, with, he says angrily, the left liberal Jewish critics frequently being described as self-hating Jews or even Jewish anti-Semites. In response to Lerman's positions, a leading Jewish public figure, Lord Kalms, put it bluntly. While he had no problem with criticism of individual Israeli government policies, the questioning of Israel's very existence risks providing cover for extremists who want Israel destroyed. Only a few weeks earlier, the same sort of battle erupted in the US when the American Jewish Committee urged American Jews to confront those Jews who have joined in what was described as a verbal onslaught against Zionism and the Jewish state. 
One of the critics was prominent historian Tony Jatt, who had denounced Israel as arrogant, aggressive, anachronistic, infantile and immoral. Taking issue, sociologist Shulamit Reinhardt rejected the idea that Jewish left-wingers could question the very existence of Israel without imperiling Jews. Many of them would say they're simply anti-Zionists, not anti-Semites. But I disagree, wrote Reinhardt. In a world where there is only one Jewish state, to oppose it vehemently is to endanger Jews. While it seems patently apparent that there is no business for slurs like traitor or self-hating Jew, the big question remains, how far should critics of Israel go? Do they have this right to criticize? Is this merely a healthy debate in the search for right and moral principles? There seems to be nothing remiss with criticism, even by fellow Jews. After all, if Israel regards itself as home to all Jews, surely then all Jews, wherever they are, just like Israelis themselves, are entitled to question Israel's policies, to challenge attitudes, to take issue with what the state is doing. The key, however, is not the criticism per se, but the fundamental position adopted by such critics. If it is their purpose not simply to criticize, but to challenge, to seek even to undermine Israel's very right to existence, the legitimacy of an independent separate state for Jews, then whether the critics are Jewish or not becomes irrelevant. It is the delegitimization of Israel which is illegitimate. Such delegitimization of Israel has become a most dangerous trend. Whether it will or will and not increase anti-Semitism around the world remains debatable. But challenging Israel's legitimacy must surely be construed as a serious threat to the very existence not only of Israel but of Jews as a community everywhere. And that must surely be factored in as most pertinent when criticism rages over the morality of what Israel does or the morality of what Israel does not do in trying to secure its continued existence.